Good evening and welcome to Pat's Picks, the progressive rock hour on KMIH-FM, Mercer Island, Washington, 88.9 The Bridge. Tonight and for all of the month of June, we will continue to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Yes with perpetual change, the music of Yes. In 1991, Yes released the album Union, or as Rick Wakeman called it, Onion, because every time he listens to it, it brings tears to his eyes. The idea came up to merge Yes with the offshoot band Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe to make a grand reunion. The problem was it was guided by record company executives who saw the opportunity to make a lot of money. The album ended up being a collection of Yes songs and ABWH songs with a lot of outside musicians contributing to the music. It was not without its merits, though. As heard on this rocker from the ABWH camp, this is Shock to the System. Another supposed low point in the Yes story was in 1978. Yes had just reunited with Rick Wakeman and completed the album and tour for the amazing Going for the One. They went into the studio to record the follow-up, but, as Rick Wakeman has said, the band were simply unproducible at that time. The result was an album that was a bit uneven, but, as with all Yes albums, had its moments of brilliance. One such moment was the closing track, the Chris Squire-led mini-epic on the silent wings of freedom. In 2001, after parting ways with their then-keyboardist Igor Koroshev, Yes decided to record an album using an orchestra instead of a keyboardist. The first time they had done so since the Time and a Word album back in 1970. The resulting album, Magnification, received mixed reviews upon its release, but I feel it is one of their most underrated works and features some fantastic songs, such as this one, which I feel stands up just as well as anything from the 1970s. This is In the Presence of... In 1995, Magna Carta Records started a series of tribute albums with Tales from Yesterday, featuring cover versions of Yes songs by some of the bigger prog bands of the day. For me, one of the real standout tracks from the album is Roundabout, as performed by Robert Berry, formerly of the band Three, a.k.a. Emerson, Berry, and Palmer. More on them in coming weeks. Barry's arrangement of one of Yes's most legendary songs was fresh and exciting and even featured Steve Howe playing the acoustic guitar at the end of the song. Pat's Picks will be back with more Perpetual Change, the music of Yes, right after this. Welcome back to Pat's Picks as we continue with Perpetual Change, the music of Yes on 88.9 The Bridge. After touring their 1974 album Relayer, Yes decided to take a break and record solo albums. Over the course of 1975 and 76, John Anderson, Steve Howe, Chris Squire, Alan White, and Patrick Mraz all released solo albums, and in the summer of 1976, toured together in support of those albums. From John Anderson's Olias of Sun Hillo, this is Meeting, Garden of Gita, and Sound Out the Galleon. As Yes became known for their epic songs in the early 70s, critics started to aim their negativity toward the band. One critic is reported to have written, What's next for Yes? Putting the Bible to music? John Anderson took that as a challenge, and the band created a double album featuring one epic track on each of the album's four sides, with lyrics by Anderson and Howe inspired by Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. 
Many believe 1973's Tales from Topographic Oceans to be the band's masterpiece. From that album, here is The Revealing Science of God, Dance of the Dawn. Thank you for listening to Pat's Picks, the progressive rock hour on 88.9 The Bridge. Any questions, comments, or requests, just look us up on Facebook at Pat's Picks Prog or email the show at patspicksprog at yahoo.com. Yes, we'll be appearing at the Chateau Saint-Michel Winery this Thursday. No doubt I'll be really excited to tell you about it next Sunday night at 9 o'clock when we will be back with more Perpetual Change, the music of yes. Until then... Hi, my name is Luca Marchetta. And-